Wyobraź sobie, że idziesz do dentysty, a tutaj obsługuje Cię gość ze strasznie żółtymi, zgniłymi zębami. Nie budzi to e, za bardzo zaufania. Idziesz do kręgarza, a tam totalnie garbaty gość, krzywy, niesamowicie, trochę e, nieufnie podszedł być do tego. Idziesz do lekarza, lekarz z paczką fajek e, przyjmuje Cię na wizytę i raczej nie wygląda na zdrowego, słabo. W związku z czym chcemy, żeby ludzie byli spójni, żeby mieć przekonanie, pewność tak naprawdę, że oni wiedzą, e, co mówią, co robią i co, że to będzie skuteczne, tak? Dlatego też dzisiaj, gdy będę ja i Steve Kaufman z Kanady, będziemy Ci mówić, jak szybko i skutecznie uczyć się języków, to żebyś wiedział, że nie jesteśmy teoretykami, którzy sobie to wymyślili i przeczytali w jakiejś książce, tylko robią to, to pogadamy w siedmiu językach. Dzisiejszy wywiad odbędzie się po polsku, po hiszpańsku, po portugalsku, po niemiecku, po francusku, po angielsku e, i chyba jeszcze jakiś język pominąłem, nie wiem, czy włoski padł. W każdym razie w siedmiu językach, także będzie to swobodna rozmowa, w której zmieniając języki na bieżąco będziemy e, przekazywać Ci wiedzę na temat tego, jak nauczyć się języka skutecznie. Zapraszam! Zawsze chciałem wiedzieć, co różni ludzi najlepszych w swoich dziedzinach od całej reszty. Postanowiłem, że po prostu zapytam ekspertów, jak oni to robią. Biorę zatem Bentleya i ruszam na spotkanie z prawdziwym mistrzostwem. Nazywam się Maciej Wieczorek, a ten program to Ekspert w Bentleyu. Witam Was serdecznie, tutaj Maciek Wieczorek i nowy odcinek Eksperta w Bentleyu. Dziś mamy gościa specjalnego, człowieka, który przyjechał do nas z Kanady, no może nie specjalnie do nas, bo zwiedza ogólnie teraz Polskę, człowieka, który mówi w 20 językach. Będziemy dzisiaj zatem mówić o językach, a żyjemy w świecie internetu, w świecie, w którym każdy może powiedzieć wszystko, zareklamować się w dowolny sposób, więc stwierdziliśmy, że żeby to pokazać, to dzisiejsza nasza rozmowa odbędzie się w siedmiu różnych językach. W siedmiu dlatego, że no cóż, Steve dzisiaj jest ograniczony moimi możliwościami, w związku z czym w 20 rozmawiać nie będziemy. Także pogadamy w siedmiu, więc myślę, że będzie ciekawie i dowiecie się bardzo dużo na temat tego, jak się uczyć języków, jak to działa, co działa, co nie działa. Z nami jest Steve Kaufman. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. To co, zaczynamy po polsku? Po polsku. E, to ja chciałem Cię zapytać, co robisz w Polsce? Co tutaj robisz? Co Ci się podoba takiego w Polsce? E, du, dużo, d, so, bardzo e, cieszę się, że jestem w, w Polsce. E, ja e, e, miałem ciekawość mm -hmm. o, o Polski, e, ponieważ ja... E, Zaczynałem, zaczynałem przed e, dużo, e, dużo lat e, uci, uczyć e, języka e, rosyjskiego. Tak? Mm -hmm. A potem, e, e, kiedy zaczynali e, wojna w Donbasie, ja e, decydowałem, e, chcę uczyć języka, języka ukraińskiego. I przed czytanie książki, słuchanie audio książki o historii Ukrainy, znałem, że między, pomiędzy Ukrainy i Polski istnieje dużo historii i miałem ciekawość pro e, historię Polski ja uh -huh. czytałem i słuchałem audio książki pro, e, o e, historię Polski uh -huh. e, no e, ale ce, to, to e, e, 8 lat temu uh -huh. A, zaraz E, ja e, e, widziałem, jakim sposobem e, Polaki, rząd i ludzie w, w Polsce pomagali e, Ukraińców. Uh -huh. e, to było dla mnie, dla mnie e, 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 bardzo. E, e, ja szanuję. Uh -huh. e, postawę Polaków i, i 
decidovałem, że chcę e, e, jest na Polskę. To, to jest raz pierwszy. Pierwszy dla mnie e, a, odwiedzić, tak, mm -hmm. odwiedzić tak. Polskę. I wrażenie duże pozytywne. Mm -hmm. Duże, bardzo pozytywne, bardzo energetyczny mm -hmm. naród, e, czysto, mm -hmm. e, smaczne je, jedzenie <laughs> e, i e, dużo historii. Mm -hmm. no. Pierogi, już. Pierogi. E, 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 wczoraj z, z żoną e, jeź, jeździliśmy e, pierogi, e, e, typiczna kuchnia, e, ta polska mm -hmm. kuchnia. Duże smaczno, z, z wino i z wodką. <laughs> ok, to taka jest to podróż. Uh, ok, uh, pienso que ahora podemos continuar en español. Sí, por supuesto. <laughs> ok, entonces uh, uh, eso, uh, eso es una locura porque uh, aquí en Polonia uh, tenemos uh, uh, una creencia que, uh, que solo los niños uh, saben cómo aprender los idiomas que para ellos mm. es súper fácil y para todos los otros es casi imposible. Sí. Uh, tú tienes... Uh, 77 años sí. y estás aprendiendo tres idiomas al mismo tiempo ¿sí? bueno, más o menos es que estaba aprendiendo el persiano y el árabe pero ahora que, que, que vengo aquí que tenía la intención de visitar a la Polonia pues he decidido que voy a aprender polonés <risa> loquísimo sí. loquísimo y, y también estás viajando mucho ¿sí? Sí. Uh, por, por Dinamarca por Suecia por Dinamarca, y, y, ahora... y también he escuchado y he trabajado un poco mi danés porque el, el idioma eh, la, la, la lengua danesa es muy cerca a la lengua suecia, pero, sueca pero es, es un poco uh -huh. distinto ¿no? pero quiero decir que los niños menos de 10 años creo que es más fácil porque uh -huh. ellos tienen su cabeza es más flexible ¿no? uh -huh. eh, pueden aprender cualquier cosa, cosa y no tienen miedo de nada ¿no? uh -huh. pero un adulto que piense, piensa que en su idioma nativo, nativo es inteligente, uh -huh. no quiere aparecer menos inteligente uh -huh. en un otro sí, idioma. Exacto. Pero, es, es, pero a cualquier edad, después de, digamos, 15, 20 años, hasta como yo, 77 o más, 80, se uh -huh. puede aprender idiomas, si tienes ganas. Uh -huh. ¿Y de dónde...? ¿Tienes estas ganas de hacerlo todo el tiempo y continuar por años? Bueno, es una cuestión de curiosidad. Uh -huh. Todo la, 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 el aprendizaje de cualquier cosa uh -huh. empieza con la curiosidad. Uh -huh. ¿no? y yo, por ejemplo, en el caso del polonés, porque había aprendido el ucraniano, uh -huh. y he aprendido cosas sobre la historia de Ucrania, y sabía que entre Polonia y Ucrania hay, bueno, como... 500 años o más, uh -huh. mil años de, 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 de relaciones uh -huh. más o menos eh, amables, ¿no? Y pues me interesaba, eh, quería saber más sobre la Polonia. Es, es, para mí siempre es la historia, más que la cultura, es la historia. Uh -huh. También por el caso del persiano, el, el árabe, saber más sobre el Medio Oriente y todo. Es, para mí uh -huh. es una cuestión de curiosidad. Entonces podemos decir que... Si una persona quiere aprender un idioma extranjero, tiene que encontrar este punto importante para ella. Uh, este punto que será uh, de gran interés, ¿sí? Sí. Que, que va a funcionar. No debe ser la historia. Para la gente que quiere aprender, por ejemplo, japonés, uh -huh. eh, quizás que es el anime, el anime que uh -huh. le interese. ¿no? O bien la cocina, uh -huh. o canciones, o lo que sea. O un amigo o una amiga, ¿no? Uh -huh. Pero necesitas un, pun un punto uh -huh. de interés o de atracción. Uh -huh. Genial. Uh -huh. uh, ok, uh, ahora creo que podemos uh, continuar en portugués. Sí. ¿Vos uh, habla portugués de Portugal o de Brasil? Eh, más. Eh, uh, falo portuñol. Ajá, como, como yo. Sí. Entonces, perfecto. Entonces, es, es, es muy difícil, porque los dos uh, idiomas son muy parecidos. Uh -huh. Entonces, cuando falo, cuando falo portugués, entiendo todo, uh -huh. mas uh, de vez en cuando voy a uh, uh, usar pala par uh, palabras, 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 I don't know, palabras de uh -huh. italiano, de español, pero 
en el aprendizaje, eh, aprendizaje de lenguas, eh, eh, lo más importante es la comunicación. Uh -huh. eh, aun, ainda que voy a usar palabras de español y de italiano, eh, las, personas, las personas entienden. Uh -huh. y, y yo puedo, puedo comunicar con esas personas, uh -huh. ainda utilizando, uh, usando eh, cosas de español y de italiano. Uh -huh. Porque yo no soy perfeccionista. Uh -huh. okay. Eso es muy, muy importante. Eh, especialmente eh, aquí en Polonia, donde eh, durante todos esos años eh, de la escuela eh, estamos aprendiendo que Uh, ser perfeito es una cosa, uh, una única cosa que, que vale, que cuenta. Uh -huh. uh, y después, cuando una, la mayoría de las personas tienen miedo de uh -huh. hablar, porque sí. tienen miedo de cometer los errores, entonces, la mi pregunta es: uh, ¿se si hizo posible hablar ese error? ¿Se si hizo no es posible? ¿Cómo, uh, cómo hablar con errores, más aceptarlo? Uh -huh. Eh, tem que aceptar a incerteza en todas las cosas. Uh -huh. Vas a esquecer, va a no poder eh, en, eh, a, 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 encontrar o las uh -huh. eh, palabras que necesitas. Entonces, te, tenemos que pasar a través de ese periodo de incerteza. Uh -huh. Poco a poco va a hablar mejor. Uh -huh. y, y es importante tener la confianza de si você continúa, va poco a poco a hablar mejor. No va a hablar peor, uh -huh. va a hablar mejor. Uh -huh. Entonces, eh, en esta viaje, as, as, eh, los error, errores, errores, uh -huh. errores, ¿no? No, son, no tienen importancia. Porque uh -huh. si você piensa que, acha, acha que va eh, a, a, a finalmente poder hablar mejor y mejor, es solo una cuestión de tiempo. Uh -huh. Tem que continuar. Uhum. Ok, perfeito. Então, eh, quando uma pessoa quer aprender um idioma estrangeiro, uh, vai en encontrar muitos métodos uh, uhum. eh, por internet, em YouTube, em, uh, uh, em blogs, uhum. eh, etc. Uh, tem muitas possibilidades. Uhum. Isso é genial, mas... Isso também é problemático, porque uh -huh. então as pessoas não sabem que exatamente, uh -huh. que, qual método usar. Uma pessoa diz, uh, você tem que escutar todo o tempo. Outros dizem, não, não, gramática é uma coisa mais importante. Uh -huh. Outros uh, dizem que, não, falar, falar uh, desde um dia número um. Uh -huh. Isso é importante. Você acha que existe uma, um método perfeito para todos? Ou uh, todas as pessoas têm que... Uh, pesquisar o seu método perfeito? A uh, um certo ponto, as pessoas têm que. Uh, pois não, buscar. Anyway, uh -huh. é, 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 é encontrar seu método uh -huh. para si mesmo, não? Mas acredito que toda a, a aprendizagem de línguas passa para o, o que se chama em inglês input. Uh -huh. Você não tem a língua entre si mesmo, não? Tem que a língua entra da fora, da, uh -huh. da input, da, da, as pessoas que falam, que escrevem. Então, tem que ler e, e escutar muito, muito, muito. Se você tem a possibilidade de falar é, cada dia, é, todo o dia, bom, é, 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 é uma situação muito é, favorável. favorável. Não, ale, ale, ale. É, mas não é impossível. É, uhum. Na maioria dos casos, a, a, a gente, as pessoas estão aprendendo a casa. Então, você pode preparar-se para falar mais através da leitura e, uhum. e a, a escuta. É, e a gramática não, não, não quer dizer que não é importante falar corretamente. Sim, toda, todos nós. nós Queremos falar corretamente, mas não é possível, através da gramática, a, a, a gramática, a, a, a essa vol, vontade de, 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 de perfeição, vontade de, de metrizar, como se diz, ou de, 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 de usar só, só é, é, as, as, as formas corretas da língua. Então, esse, esse impede a aprendizagem. Uhum. Tem que continuar 
a escuchar, leer, hablar y creer que poco a poco se va a mejorar. Uh -huh. Perfecto. Ok. Uh, allora penso che possiamo continuare in italiano. Sì, uh, possibilmente. Mio... C'è troppo per il mio sì, cervello. Vita, anche per me. Anche per me. <ride> Questo è pazzesco. Uh, ma lo facciamo, perché, perché no? Uh, allora, uh, tu uh, nei tuoi video uh -huh. uh, frequentemente uh, dici che la cosa molto importante uh, sono le parole, uh, sapere sì. tante parole come, sì. sia, come sia possibile, perché questa è una cosa che possiamo uh, numerare, contare, uh, controllare e sì. per questo uh, è il tema principale anche del, del, uh, della tua piattaforma sì. uh, LinkQ. Sì. Uh, allora uh, la mia domanda è uh, che metodi possiamo utilizzare per uh, comprendere tutte queste parole, per uh, memorizzare tutto questo perché ogni lingua ha più tanta di non so ma, ma penso che 500 mille parole, parole. Mm -hmm. eh, è pazzesco mm -hmm. eh, allora che eh, cosa esattamente possiamo fare eh, adesso abbiamo eh, delle applicazioni come le, le, le mp3 mm -hmm. che è, è molto facile sempre avere delle delle, come si dice, files, eh, audio, as, uh -huh. as, as, ascoltare, eh, possiamo leggere sull'internet, eh, utilizzare i eh, dizionari sull'internet uh -huh. con un click eh, molto, molto eh, pronto a sapere eh, le, la significativa delle parole, eh, perché, perché è certo che eh, dimenticheremo tutto che eh, vogliamo apprendere è certo che vamo a dimenticare uh -huh. e dunque eh, ne, eh, eh, bisogna eh, continuare a leggere continuare a, a utilizzare come in, in mia piattaforma eh, eh, un dizionario che possiamo eh, dove possiamo cercare la significazione eh, molto rapido per eh, 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 dopo dimenticare e eh, altre volte cercare mm -hmm. altre volte dimenticare e, e, to, e, to, e, 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 dunque e, o, più importante ad, adesso my head is completely confused è eh, 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 molto eh, importante che eh, contenuti, contenuti che usiamo eh, contenuti per, a, a leggere a ascoltare che ci sono delle cose di interesse mm -hmm. dunque non avete l'impressione di apprendere la lingua o, o mm -hmm. io no eh, in, eh, legge, leggende eh, si poss possiamo leggere e scusare delle, delle cose di interesse su qualcosa, sulle sport, sulla cucina, sulla storia. Intanto la lingua va a entrare, l'idioma, la, la lingua va a entrare in su, mm -hmm. su, su cerebro, no? Mm -hmm. e dunque, que questo è un, un punto molto importante per me. Mm -hmm. Allora, una persona che per esempio non è interessata nella storia del paese uh -huh. uh, ha bisogno di cercare qualcosa di altro sì sì eh, e anche io per esempio per il polonese e adesso posso leggere delle libri in polonese senza il dizionario online mm -hmm. eh, però e non è un libro facile non è difficile, no, perché, perché eh, e anche ho con me sempre fa, vuol fare referenza alla grammatica. Quando eh, ho la, la curiosità per, per sapere perché, 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 perché può cercare nel libro del me, non vuol eh, eh, cominciare con la grammatica, vuol, eh, 
cercare delle cose sulla grammatica dopo, ok? Mm -hmm. Ma posso leggere adesso, ma al, all'inizio non, non, non era possibile per me leggere un, un libro così, mm -hmm. ne, eh, era eh, necessario eh, leggere sull'internet per poter, poter cercare tutte queste parole sul dizionario, nel mio sito. Adesso, eh, per esempio, in link, eh, ho un vocabolario passivo, mm -hmm. 40.000 parole. No, eh, evidentemente nelle, nelle, le, nelle lingue slaviche mm -hmm. ci sono molte forme della stessa sì, parola. Esatto. Dunque, 40.000 parole mm -hmm. in polonese, forse mm -hmm. <ride> come 20.000 parole in mm -hmm. altra lingua, ma in, in, tutto, in, in, in ogni caso adesso in, in, eh, eh, ogni pagina ci sono poche parole che non conosco Enton, eh, enton, eh, eh, dunque come in tutte le lingue che, pa che, 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 che parlo ho eh, eh, oh, 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 uh, una capacità un livello livello di comprensione mm -hmm. molto ma più grande che mi capacità di parlare ma adesso se io vo, se io vo in Italia come se, se io vo eh, eh, che, che, non chiedermi ma eh, morire eh, vivere in, in Polonia due mesi perché ten, un, ho questo livello di comprensione e ho molte parole parole che vo eh, compre, intendere comprendere capire tutto quelli mm. polonesi o l'italiano mi dicono e poco a poco mm -hmm. mi capacità di parlare si va me me migliorando mm -hmm. e se per me dunque il vocabolario passivo è molto molto importante per perché se tu non capis capisci eh, l'altro mm -hmm. no, eh, l'altro no? la, la persona con la quale sta eh, mm -hmm. eh, eh, conversando non è possibile avere una conversazione e attraverso le conversazioni si può migliorarsi. Mm -hmm. uh, allora, uh, tu ricomanda ricomanderebbe utilizzare qualche metodo come le associazioni per memorizzare le parole o semplicemente uh, leggere e lasciarlo tutto uh, al processo automatico? Per me lasciare al processo automatico. Eh, non ho la pazienza di fare tutte queste mm -hmm. eh, 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 corrispondenze, no? Eh, 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 ho l'impressione, la, la volontà di controllare le parole, di apprendere, vuoi apprendere queste parole, mm -hmm. e una eh, non funziona, no? Mm -hmm. Perché eh, bisogniamo incontrare le stesse parole molte volte in, in, in contesti mm -hmm. differenti, no? Para poco a poco. E non possiamo controllare eh, il cerebro. Mm. il cervello come mm -hmm. si dice il cervello. Cioè, cervello non possiamo <ride> controllare il cervello va a prendere quando vuole mm -hmm. quando sì. vuole ci sono delle parole molto difficili che il cervello va a prendere mm -hmm. eh, sì, subito e altri molto comuni parole basiche mm -hmm. e il cervello va sempre a dimenticare mm -hmm. Dunque, per me la volontà di fare delle collezioni, di space repetition system, tutto questo è in. Um, ah, io sì. Uh -huh. eh, troppa non, complicazione, sì. Eh, no, troppa complicazione e non è, diver non è divertente, no, non è piacevole. Uh -huh. Molto più piacevole leggere sull'istoria per me è interessante oppure l'altro sarebbe il sport o la cucina o whatever è molto più piacevole e dunque le persone vanno a continuare uh -huh. continuare se il, il, il viaggio eh, attraverso la lingua il, il processo di apprendimento è piacevole uh -huh. Continueremo e se non è piacevole, se è un sforzo che voglio apprendere queste mm. parole, 
molte, molte persone vanno a abbandonare. Mm-hmm. Ah, ok, uh, ich denke, dass jetzt wir könnten uh, mit dem Deutsch uh, okay. fortfahren. <lacht> ich werde versuchen. <lacht> okay. ja, aber das ist, uh, ja, das ist uh, ganz zu viel jetzt. Ja, ja. Aber, uh, aber wir müssen es machen. Und uh, ja, jetzt, uh, du denkst, dass, uh, oder uh, wie könnten wir immer diese Motivation zu, zu haben, ja, zu, uh, mit dieser Motivation zu fortsetzen. Uh, zum Beispiel, uh, wenn du lernst uh, Polnisch mhm. oder andere, uh, anderes, uh, andere Sprache, das uh, sehr schwierig ist mhm. uh, und es ist nicht so natürlich für uns zum Beispiel Tschechisch ist uh, sehr einfach, aber, einfach. Uh, aber Deutsch ist sehr kompliziert ja. und uh, deshalb uh, wir nicht, nicht so kompliziert wie Polnisch. Anyway. <lacht> Okay. Ja. Und deshalb es ist es so einfach, diese Motivation zu verlieren. Mhm. Und wann könnten wir dann machen? Also es gibt verschiedene Motivationen. Mhm. Es gibt Leute zum Beispiel hier, vielleicht in Polen, die wollen Englisch lernen oder Deutsch lernen, mhm. weil das mit der Arbeit hat zu tun. Es mhm. gibt mehr, also viele Möglichkeiten. Das ist eine schlechte Arbeit. Information. Da, <lacht> Arbeit. Besser, besser, also Arbeit zu finden. Aber auch diese Leute, die lernen, sie haben fast eine Obligation, die Sprachen zu lernen mhm. für die Arbeit. Ne? Aber diese Leute auch, wenn sie können etwas interessant finden, Mhm. Oder das kann auch ein Freund oder Freundin sein, mhm. aber auch ein Interesse für Kuchen oder was, Geschichte. Aber ich glaube auch, man muss, es gibt eine Rede in Französisch, l'appétit vient en mangeant. Mhm. Also, wenn man isst, dann kommt der Appetit, ne? der Appetit. Und man muss am Anfang sich zwingen ein bisschen. Und wenn man findet, dass, ja, ich habe etwas gelernt, jetzt, jetzt kann ich etwas auf Deutsch sagen oder mhm. ich habe etwas, die ich vorher nicht verstanden, jetzt verstehe ich das. Mhm. Diese äh, ist sehr positiv für äh, seine Motivation. Man, mhm. man muss also diesen äh, Success haben, also Erfolg haben, mhm. und, aber man muss auch eine Chance geben. So, man muss am Anfang ein bisschen zwingen, manchmal, okay? Mhm. Äh, und äh, am Anfang ist es schwierig. Ich verstehe, ich habe zum Beispiel Persiane, äh, äh, Persisch, äh, also Farsi äh, begonnen. Und am Anfang, äh, am Anfang, ich verstehe absolut nichts und kann auch nicht lesen. Mhm. Aber man muss glauben, wenn ich fortsetze, dann werde ich am Ende, ich werde diese Sprache äh, verstehen und mhm. auch äh, sprechen mögen. Mhm. Okay? Und das war das Beispiel für, für, für Russisch, für Polnisch, für, für ich weiß nicht, äh, Chinesisch, also alle Sprachen. Man muss nur fortsetzen. Mhm. Und du denkst, dass äh, für eine neue Sprache zu lernen, es ist wichtig im Ausland gehen oder es ist, äh, weil äh, zum Beispiel für mich, es ist äh, einfacher äh, eine Fremdsprache zu lernen äh, nach meinem Hause, mhm. weil wenn ich äh, besuche andere Länder äh, und sie Sie hören, dass meine Sprache ist nicht perfekt. Ja, ja. Sie sie immer mit der Englisch starten ja, und das äh, zerstört mich. Natürlich. Und das ist auch mein Beispiel hier in Polen. Okay. Mhm. Deswegen glaube ich, man muss sehr viel arbeiten zu Hause, ein gutes Niveau haben. Wenn mhm. also mein Niveau auf Polnisch ist nicht genug gut. Also es gibt Leute hier, die nicht Englisch sprechen. Und mhm. Sie werden mir auf Polnisch antworten. Mhm. Aber die im, im Restaurant oder im Hotel, sie haben gut äh, Niveau äh, Englisch, sie werden sofort auf Englisch antworten. Mhm. Äh, aber wenn äh, ich, äh, ich hatte einmal diese selbe Erfahrung äh, äh, also am ersten Mal in, in Portu- Portugal war. Mhm. Ich hatte ein, mein Niveau auf Portugiesisch war nicht genug gut. Und die Leute haben immer auf Englisch geantwortet. Ja. Aber das zweite Mal, ich hatte ein besseres Niveau auf Portugiesisch mhm. und die Leute haben mit mir äh, also Portugiesisch gespro- gesprochen. Weil die meisten Leute, sie wollen nur kommunizieren. kommunizieren. Sie sind mhm. nicht deine äh, also Lehrer. Okay? Die mhm. sind Leute, 
gewöhnliche, normale Leute. Sie wollen nur kommunizieren. Und mhm. wenn ihr Niveau auf Englisch ist besser als mein Niveau auf Polisch, Polnisch, dann werden mhm. die, die meistens auf äh, äh, Englisch äh, antworten. Mhm. So, ich glaube, es gibt viele Möglichkeiten heute. Äh, wir haben Internet, wir haben Möglichkeit, Möglichkeit, so viele Dinge auf Netflix, Podcast, alle möglichen äh, mhm. Dinge zu, zu, zu äh, anwenden, verwenden, zu, zu sehr viel zu hören und lesen und, und äh, also Wörter speichern und so, dass wenn man dieses Land, es ist, es ist besser. Also ich habe lange Zeit Tschechisch gelernt und dann war ich in Prag und dann, das war auch eine Motivation für mich. Mhm. Ich werde nach Prag gehen. Okay, ich muss mein Niveau auf Tschechisch verbessern. Mhm. Dann, wenn ich in Prag war, ich hatte diese Möglichkeit, sehr viel also auf Tschechisch zu sprechen. Mhm. So, man muss eine Strategie haben. Mhm. Man kann nicht nur auf, oh, ich, oh, ich fahre nach Polen, Polen. Aber sowieso, es, es gibt auch Leute, die mit mir auf Polnisch sprechen. Mhm. Aber ich, ich, wenn ich ein besseres Niveau hätte, das wäre, wäre noch besser. Mhm. Und ich werde noch also, äh, besser also Fortschritt machen. Mhm. Fortschritt machen. Das ist sehr, sehr gut und äh, ja, ich denke, dass wir sind jetzt sehr motivi motiviert. Äh, ja, äh, und äh, okay. Äh, also, oui. <lacht> nous pouvons continuer en français. Oui. Euh, et, euh, quand nous voulons parler les langues, oui. euh, nous devons parler les langues. Bien sûr. Euh, mais aussi, euh, il y a beaucoup euh, d'autres méthodes, euh, comme euh, l'input comprehensible oui. et toutes les autres, euh, nous avons euh, nous préparé. Alors, quand euh, est ce euh, moment, ce moment par parfait pour commencer de parler avec les autres, euh, pour, parce que probablement euh, ce n'est pas euh, le premier jour. Euh, parce que euh, ça serait un peu trop stressant. Euh, alors, euh, quand nous sommes préparés pour parler ben, Moi, j'aime pas tellement avoir une conversation avec quelqu'un parce qu'aujourd'hui, on peut trouver sur l'Internet des personnes avec lesquelles on peut parler. Mm -hmm. Mais je ne veux pas avoir une conversation si je ne comprends pas ce que dit l'autre. Donc, mm -hmm. il me faut un niveau de vocabulaire. Dans le cas de mon application, je, je trouve qu'en 3000 mots, 5000 mots, c'est à peu mm -hmm. près à, à ce moment-là que je commence à parler. Parce que il faut dire que pour bien parler, il faut beaucoup parler. Okay? Mm -hmm. je, ce ce n'est pas assez de beaucoup écouter et de beaucoup lire. Par exemple, mon polonais, j'ai beaucoup lu, j'ai beaucoup écouté. Et aujourd'hui, c'est la deuxième ou troisième conversation que j'ai en polonais. Donc, si j'avais la possibilité de beaucoup parler polonais ou n'importe quelle langue, ben là, je vais commencer à parler mieux et mieux, mieux. Mais je n'ai pas peur de parler. Je n'ai pas peur de parler. Mais je ne veux pas commencer trop tôt. Et quand le moment de commencer, ça dépend. Quand j'ai vécu au Japon, là, dès le premier jour, tout ce que je savais, j'ai essayé de l'utiliser parce que j'étais entouré de japonais. Mais à Vancouver, au Canada, avec le polonais, avec qui je vais parler polonais. Donc, je passe mon temps plus tôt parce que c'est facile à organiser. J'écoute le matin, je me lève, je prépare le petit, dé prépare le petit déjeuner, j'écoute le polonais, mm -hmm. j'écoute l'histoire, Ludova Historia Polski, ok? <rire> et j'apprends des choses, et il y a un tas de choses que j'ai pas compris, puis ensuite je vais lire, mm -hmm. euh, les mêmes, donc le même texte, je vais lire, je vais sauvegarder des mots, euh, mais là je me prépare. Mais éventuellement, euh, si on est, bien sûr, dans ces deux cas, soit, tu vis entouré de gens qui parlent cette langue, alors là, tu l'utilises à chaque moment, sans peur. Mm -hmm. Ou bien, tu es loin de, du pays où la langue est parlée, alors là, il faut se préparer. Donc, il faut surtout faire croître euh, ton vocabulaire mm -hmm. et avec l'intention de visiter le pays, si possible. C'est pas possible pour tout le monde. Mais dans mon cas, je savais que j'allais en Pologne. Donc, chaque jour, j'écoutais et je lisais un polonais. Mm -hmm. euh... Alors, de, de pense que euh, il y a ce euh, changement de génération que oui. euh, que sa nouvelle génération a beaucoup de peur. Euh, comment il euh, il sent beaucoup de ses émotions. Euh, on veut de simplement faire les choses. Oui. 
euh, je ne sais pas si c'est une question de génération. Mm -hmm. euh, je crois que, bon, euh, quelqu'un qui a, disons, un jeune de 10 ans, il n'a pas peur, mm -hmm. il n'a pas d'inhibition, il trouve ses amis, il communique, il communique mm -hmm. n'importe comment. Euh, Alors, c'est pas... la faute de l'école. Non, 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 je crois que plus on est vieux, plus euh, nos cerveaux commencent à devenir un peu plus raides, un peu euh, durs. Euh, mais euh, je crois que la, 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 cette question de perfectionnisme, ce n'est pas une question de génération. Euh, C'est une question, ça peut être la faute des, des écoles. Pourquoi Parce que à l'école, on nous donne des tests. Mm -hmm. C'est quoi les tests C'est On veut des résultats. Je, moi, je suis l'enseignant, j'ai enseigné ceci, maintenant je vais te tester là-dessus. Et c'est un peu pour... pour c est, c est, on a hâte d'avoir des résultats. Euh, vite. Mais c'est pas ça la, les langues. Les langues s'apprennent doucement, tranquillement, lentement. Et, et, et on peut pas contrôler ce qu'on va ce dont on va se rappeler, ce qu'on va pouvoir apprendre euh, maintenant, euh, dans six mois, dans douze mois, c'est pas contrôlable. Alors la seule chose qu'on peut contrôler, c'est notre niveau d'activité. Donc même dans les écoles, ils devraient mettre l'accent sur l'activité des apprenants. Comment les insister à passer du temps avec la langue N'importe comment, lisant, écoutant, écoutant des chansons, euh, parlant, n'importe quoi. C'est l'activité qui, qui compte. Il y a quelques-uns qui vont peut-être prononcer mieux. D'autres vont avoir un meilleur vocabulaire. Et tout ça, il y aura des, diffi des différences. Mais mm -hmm. l'activité, c'est la chose qu'on peut contrôler. Mm -hmm. Moi, j'apprends, euh, disons, le polonais. Bah, je vais passer un, euh, une heure et demie par jour l'activité, mais je ne peux pas contrôler euh, ma capacité d'apprendre, avec quelle vitesse je vais apprendre, mm -hmm. euh, combien de mots je vais apprendre, je ne peux pas contrôler. Mm -hmm. Mais je peux contrôler mon temps, mon activité. Alors c'est la question de l'acceptance de la réalité, oui. Oui. C'est génial. C'est génial, c'est aussi simple, mais je pense que c'est aussi uh, important. Uh, okay, so we've started with, with my language, so we're gonna finish with your. <laughs> It makes it a lot uh, easier for me, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, uh, do you think that this acceptance of errors that we've been talking about here uh, comes with time, with practice? Because as I've said you before right. we started this interview, I've last three nights uh, preparing for our, okay. maybe not preparing, but yeah, because yeah. Uh, I felt prepared enough, but right. uh, but thinking about it, yeah. because it was so stressful that like 100,000 people will hear me speaking seven languages okay. and there's no escape. Yeah, like right. uh, if I've decided to do it, then I'm gonna do it and whatever is gonna be the result. Yeah, even Same if here. I make thousand errors, then why not? Yes. Uh, And I even thought that you would say something like, you know, let's let's just do it in English. But you were pretty quick to accept the fact that we're oh, going to yeah. speak various languages here. So, uh, so it didn't help. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. There was no escape. Uh, so, so do you think it comes with time that, it, yeah, I'm going to come there, I'm going to speak, I'm going to just give this interview in a couple of languages and they will hear maybe some mistakes and whatever, I don't care, I'm just having fun here uh, because that's the that's the level uh, where I'm going to, where I want to be, yeah, like ev everyone, everyone uh, wants to be there, you know, like, yeah, having fun with it, not thinking about perfection and all the stuff. You, you know, the, the fact is everyone wants to speak better, okay? Mm -hmm. I think it's unrealistic to expect to speak perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like some people say, I sound like a native. Well, no, very, very few people sound like a native, mm -hmm. like practically yeah. zero. So that's not a realistic, that can be your goal. That's fine. I would like to mm -hmm. play tennis like uh, Roger Federer, mm -hmm. but it's not realistic. I'm not going to play like Roger Federer. So we have to be realistic. Uh, making mistakes and forgetting things is part of the process. And in fact, and, and I've had the experience, uh, even being corrected doesn't mean I stop making the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, again, on Link, I have sessions with a tutor. Tutor writes all my mistakes down, or like the correct form. Mm -hmm. and, and I see week after week, I make the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. So it's a slow process. It's a process of making mistakes. And if we continue, we will slowly, slowly get better. And I think the willingness to accept 
mistakes, to accept that we forget. And, and this is another thing. When we forget, that is actually a good thing. Because forgetting and relearning and forgetting and relearning is actually helping to solidify that knowledge in your brain. This is based on neurological research. We have to forget. And we have in our brain vast amounts of knowledge, words that we have learned. Even if we can't retrieve those words, they are in our memory reserve. And slowly these will start to, you know, activate. Mm -hmm. And so the, the fact that we make mistakes or we forget things or even structures in the language, uh, you know, we, we say it wrong, typically influenced by our own language. And, and even that is not a problem. I have done business, you know, over 40 years. Most of my career was in the wood business, in the international trade of forest products. I've spoken to people, people who speak English very well, Swedes, Germans, and inevitably there are expressions there that reflect usage in their language. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what they are for Germans, for French, for Swedes, for Japanese. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. We are communicating. And the whole thing about speaking foreign languages is the fun, the enjoyment, the adventure of communicating in another language. And it's almost like make-believe. You know, mm -hmm. in a way, my own language is reality. And every language, every other language that I speak is this this adventure in another language, in another uh -huh. culture. And, and so, and, and, and then the ability to read things in that language. Every time I pick up, now that I pick up a Polish book and I read and I understand what's written there, it's a, a tremendous sense of satisfaction. The fact that when I speak Polish, I make a lot of mistakes, doesn't take away from the enjoyment mm -hmm. of this language adventure, you know? So I think you have to look at the total picture and not, and unfortunately, I think the school system is to blame because they test us all the time. Mm -hmm. And so you got six out of 10 or eight out mm -hmm. of 10. And if I don't get 10 out of 10, there's something wrong with me. But yeah. in fact, no, <laughs> five out of 10 is fine. Mm -hmm. So if we make mistakes, we're not uh, losers, but we're winners because we're trying to do something exactly. and we're trying to improve. That's, exactly. That's great. Great. Uh, so uh, right now I'd like to ask you about time management because, uh, yes. well, I guess uh, not everyone or probably almost no one uh, wants to learn 20 languages. Right. Probably I'm the only one here who also <laughs> aspires for that. Uh, but uh, it's pretty difficult to juggle so many tasks. Yeah. In right. your case, the, yes. those are languages like right. 17, 17 languages uh, that you've learned before and then uh, trying to learn three new right. ones. Uh, I also juggle a lot of stuff uh, like right. uh, maintaining those eight that I speak right. and in the meantime learning three new. Right. Uh, and I would like to learn 10 new at the same time, but then for I sure. have to. Uh, keep myself from doing that uh, and uh, in the meantime we uh, we also have lives yeah <laughs> like, right. languages are not our only things that right. we take care of uh, so we've got families and uh, other passions and so on and our viewers have their job and things to do uh, so even if they learn only one or two languages they have a lot on their on their plate uh, all right so how to manage it all, how to be effective and to get results in order, because I guess, uh, I guess maybe I would only add it. Sure. Because uh, I guess the worst part is to just pause for six months, because I guess then we have to uh, start all over again. Like. Okay, so uh, first of all, in terms of activities during the day, mm -hmm. by far the easiest thing to do is to listen. Mm -hmm. So I have on yeah. my iPhone, you know, a book, a, a library of content in so many different languages that, you know, 20 years ago, a university language lab would not, la you know, would not mm -hmm. have not a fraction of mm -hmm. what I am able to carry around with me on, on my yeah. iPhone. So I can listen to whatever I want. I can, I would, today, this morning, I was walk, went for a walk around 7.30. So I'm listening to my post and I said, you know, maybe I should give Czech a try. I've been away from Czech. So I was listening to Czech. I could put on Romanian. I could put anything. I carry it with me. So listening is the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. When you listen, there are things you don't understand. You're curious. And then you want to read because reading, you can then look up the words. So that's, first of all, in terms of finding the time, listening is the key. Listening is the trigger. Listening pulls you into the language mm -hmm. because it's very easy to do. The second thing is organizing the time. I have said that, you know, as language learners, we have to accept uncertainty. 
So I do not spend any time maintaining the languages that I have learned before. There are some languages, say my best 10 languages, I'm not going to forget them. I can turn them on now and speak. Mm -hmm. There are another 10 languages that, that, like Czech, for example, I can't speak. It would take me a few hours mm -hmm. and I could refresh it. I don't worry about it. When I need them, if I'm about, if I'm going to go to Prague, I will refresh my Czech. Mm -hmm. And when it comes back, it will come back stronger than ever because mm -hmm. things that we relearn, we learn them better. And so in the case of Polish, 2015, after the, you know, the events in Donbass and stuff, and I listen, you know, I was reading and listening to the history of Ukraine, and I discovered the relationship between Poland and Ukraine, I said, I want to learn Polish. So I spent three months on Polish in 2015. And on my, you know, on link in my application, I can see the history because we track it. I can see the stats. Three months, I learned Polish. Then I didn't touch Polish since 2015. And now, in preparation for my trip here, I spent two months on Polish. I am better now than I was then. So mm -hmm. there is no danger that you're going to lose it. You will slip back, but everything you have learned is there. The enjoyment you had, say you spent one month, three months, six months, enjoying learning that language, and then you leave it, it's there. And when you go to rediscover, it's like hooking up with an old friend after a long mm -hmm. absence and it just comes right back. So I don't worry about it. I don't try to maintain all these. You can't possibly. Mm -hmm. There's not, I can't be learning new languages and worrying about the languages that I learned before. Mm -hmm. Cannot. Yeah. Just accept it. And while you were speaking about uh, three months or two months with Polish, I, the, a question came to my mind. Uh, like, uh, should we start uh, um, kind of uh, aggressively like I mean uh, because uh, nowadays everything tends to be to uh, to seem easier and easier we're gonna teach you in uh, two weeks right. and you know everything uh, while it's as you've said it's a slow process uh, and there is also something that uh, one guy on YouTube called uh, language gravity yeah like if right. you start too small yeah. then you always gravitate towards your native language or your uh, foreign, but the language that you know. For example, right. if I start with Norwegian, then I tend to escape from that. If it's, uh, if it's not too aggressive, like one hour or two right. hours of Norwegian per day, right. then I tend to watch Spanish videos on YouTube right. or listen to uh, French audiobooks because uh, the gravity yes. uh, comes and takes me to the things that I already know and right. that are easier without all this uh, tough, um, with, without those shortcomings of, uh, sure. of a new thing. So right. do you think we should start with 10 minutes per day or maybe later we're gonna dimin diminish to that number, but in the beginning we should rather uh, attack it aggressively to know as uh, to learn as fast as possible. Okay, so there's two things there. First of all, of course we're going to be attracted to things that are easier and more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So for you it's probably easier to listen to an audiobook in French than to listen to one in Norwegian. Mm -hmm. So if your goal is to do something enjoyable, you may end up going to the mm -hmm. languages that you know yeah. you can enjoy. Uh, but when we're learning languages, we are kind of we have a certain motivation to learn this new language. And so I think that's easily overcome, the temptation to go back to the easier things. I don't see that as a big, uh, you know, danger. Uh, but when I start a new language, I know that I have to... So again, at Link, we have these mini stories with a lot of repetition. Each story repeats the same vocabulary five times. And so you have to work with content that's relatively easy. And unlike most starter books, like Teach Yourself, Living Language, I don't know what the equivalents are here in mm -hmm. Poland, sort of books that get you started, right? They don't have enough repetition. They mm -hmm. go to the train station, the post office, the doctor's yeah. office, and they don't repeat the same vocabulary. You need to have a lot of repetition at the beginning. So I will listen 10, 20, 30 times to the same story. Mm -hmm. Not at one sitting. I listen story one, two, three, four, five, back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But I end up listening a lot. And, and actually, the early part of learning a language is almost in some ways the easiest because it's all new to you, you understand nothing, and all of a sudden you understand something. 
So there's a great sense of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And we know that in all languages, the word frequency declines very, very quickly. So that mm -hmm. the very, you know, frequent people often say, well, I only need, if I should focus on get a list of the most common 500 words, you're going to get those 500 words. Mm -hmm. They show up all the time. And they're not enough to have a conversation, mm -hmm. despite what some yeah. people say. It's not enough. So you have this high frequency, you're seeing the words often, high frequency words, you have a sense of achievement. Then starts the difficult period because there are so many relatively low frequency words that we need to know. Yeah. And so then we need to listen a lot and read a lot. And that's where it becomes important to find stuff that's interesting. Could be a podcast, could be an audio book, mm -hmm. could be a TV program, could be a movie. But you have to find things that are interesting so that now, rather than focusing on, you know, this repetition of basic words and basic structures, mm -hmm. you're now motivated by your interest in the subject. And so then you, that keeps you going through this more difficult period. So to me, I see it as two possibly three stages. The initial stage is lots of repetitive listening and, but still, I always have this hour, hour and a half a day. That's, I don't go six hours, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, and then uh, your goal is to get to where you can watch a movie and understand half of it. S but somewhere in between now, there are so many people putting out content, even in Polish, I found it, you know, YouTube material that's not difficult. There's some, there's a motivational speaker, a Polish woman. We have her in, in, in Lake. I don't remember her name, but, but all the sort of motivational stuff uses relatively easy vocabulary, mm -hmm. right? Much easier than a formal book, for example. But it's still interesting. So, so you progress. So I think lots of repetition up front, uh, gradually moving to sort of more accessible material, maybe podcasts, help, help, self help stuff, and then moving into maybe things of greater interest to you. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. And do you, uh, do you have to look up all the words? I mean, if you read a book in Polish about Chopin, for right. example, and uh, you encounter some words that you don't know of, then uh, you look them all up or maybe you use some method, some uh, Occam's razor here, like I'm gonna yeah, yeah. check up, uh, check uh, only three words per page or something like this. No. So until I, f when I'm reading a book like this, I don't look up anything, okay? Uh -huh. Whatever I don't, I understand. See, it doesn't bother me to understand 70%. Mm -hmm. I, I still have this enjoyment. I'm back in Warsaw in, uh, eight, well, he was in Vienna, then he was in Warsaw in 1830. Mm -hmm. I'm reading about it in Polish. I understand 70%. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Typically though, I would go to publio.pl Mm -hmm. I would buy audiobook, ebook, matching. Mm -hmm. So then I can, with one click, import the ebook into Link. Mm -hmm. I listen to the audiobook on their application. So I go to Publio, I listen on Publio, and then I go to Link where I have imported the ebook. And so there I go through it and I'm looking up words. But unfortunately, I found this in a bookstore. I haven't found the ebook, so I'm stuck. I would prefer. To have this in an ebook version so I could import it into Link and look up every word. Because mm -hmm. if I'm in Link, if I'm online, I like to look up every word in the knowledge that I will forget it. I don't, I don't try to, you know, think too hard, just look it up. Mm -hmm. And it'll show up again and again and again in a different color in the case of Link. And that's what, what I do. But there's something about a paper book, right? Mm -hmm. It's nice yeah. to hold on to a book so I don't want to always be reading on my iPad. So, but if I had this ebook, I would read it on the ebook, look up the words, and then I would go through here and I would understand more. But even if I understand 70%, mm -hmm. it's good enough for me. Because I think to be a good language learner, you have to, it all comes back to this. You have to accept uncertainty. You don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. You can't remember. You make mistakes. It's all part of language learning. Mm -hmm. And for example, if you, for example, if you learn uh, a language that has a different alphabet, yeah. because uh, you also learned uh, Russian, Ukrainian, uh, Japanese, Mandarin Chinese, uh, these languages are could be pretty problematic because it's not as easy to look words up. Yeah, because uh, of course we can install some keyboards right. and so on, but uh, they are very tough to, to, to use. Uh, so, uh, 
how do we handle that situation? If you've had this book in Japanese right. and, or Farsi, for example, right. then how are you going to look those words? Well, I typically only use link, so I just click mm -hmm. on the word. I click on the word, it goes into my database, I can review mm -hmm. it, I have statistics. It's, that's my learning environment, so it's not an issue for me. Uh, when I was learning Chinese uh, 50 years ago, Uh, I would not look anything up in a traditional dictionary because it's too much work. Mm -hmm. You know, in, the, in those days, the way you looked up a Chinese character was you had to count the strokes. So characters with 10 strokes, 12 strokes, four, they were all grouped together. Well, you could count it wrong. You think it's 12, mm -hmm. it's actually 13 strokes. You can't find the word. You spent five minutes looking for the word. And unfortunately, if you look something up in a dictionary, as soon as you close the dictionary, In most cases, you've forgotten mm -hmm. what was there. Yeah. Gone, gone. So to spend a lot of time looking something up is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we have online dictionaries. You click on the word, you have the meaning. But better still, say in the case of, of Link, save it to a database because you want to be able to go back in there and review it. If you just look it up, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, th that's basically the, the, the method. And the, the issue, of course, with different writing systems, I, I ha it's difficult. It's difficult to write. Writing is the most difficult thing. And uh, certainly to write by hand. I don't write by hand. I can't. I lived in Japan for nine years. I did business in Japanese, absolutely no problem. I can read the newspaper, but I write by hand, I couldn't possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, even in the Cyrillic, like I, I can't write by hand. Mm -hmm. But uh, nowadays you don't really need to. And I can dictate into my iPhone. In Russian, in Japanese, in Chinese, I dictate, and it comes out. And then I say, no, no, not that one. I wanted this one. And as you know, if you mm -hmm. use dictation on your yeah. iPhone. So it's, it's really not an issue. But languages with different writing systems are much more difficult to learn. Mm -hmm. Because all of our lives, whether an English speaker or a Polish speaker, all of our lives we have read in the Latin alphabet. So our brain like totally used to that. Mm -hmm. So even though the Cyrillic alphabet is not difficult, but it's yeah. just a little more difficult. It's yeah. a little more difficult because mm -hmm. it's not what we're used to. Mm -hmm. Not to mention Arabic or <laughs> Chinese. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, so uh, that was great. Uh, and uh, languages open uh, the world for us. And yep. we can encounter uh, and meet a lot of people, a lot of cultures, see the differences. Uh, so my question is, uh, do you see a huge difference uh, between, for example, Polish culture and uh, Canadian? Like because we know, uh, we f I don't know if we know, but we think here in Poland that, for example, in the United States, right. people avoid languages because English is enough for them. I don't know if it applies also for Canada. Right. Uh, but uh, do you see the difference like this, for example? Because in Poland, everyone knows that if you don't speak English, then your life is going to be right. harder. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I mean, it, I think there is a difference between English speakers and speakers of other languages. For better or for worse, English is the international language. If, I, if I'm on a plane and there's a Japanese person here and a Brazilian person there, mm -hmm. we're going to speak English, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's very convenient. Yeah. But it's a disadvantage for English speakers because it yeah. means less motivation. Most people are not like me or you. Mm -hmm. Most people say, I'm interested in, uh, you know, <laughs> some language. Most people are like, what do I need today mm -hmm. to put bread on the table? And uh, the fact is that the English speakers don't need the other languages. However, at least in Canada, we have two languages. Uh, even in Vancouver, where there aren't many French speakers, there must be hundred, uh, several hundred thousand kids that go to school in French. Mm -hmm. So my grandchildren went to school in French. So at that level, the parents say, I want my kids to go to school in French. Okay. Uh, but by and large, and there are, I mean, I attended the Polyglot Conference in Montreal, and there were people there from all over North America, and they were all speaking five, six, seven, eight, nine languages. So there are polyglots. But I mean, what's, what's lovely in, uh, in Europe for me is I go to Denmark, they speak Danish. I go to Sweden next door, they speak Swedish. Mm -hmm. I come to Poland, they speak Polish. If I go across the border here to Czech um, mm -hmm. Republic or to Ukraine, they speak a different language. I can go to, uh, on holidays in Spain or Italy. So yeah, there's, it's not, there's a greater necessity, but also a greater opportunity. Mm -hmm. And therefore the attitude towards language learning here is, is more positive. If we talk about culture in a more general sense, people's lifestyles, of course there are differences in every country. There's differences between Canada and the U.S. for that matter. We don't, mm -hmm. no one has a gun in Canada for starters, mm -hmm. okay? We're not into the gun culture. Uh, so uh, even if you take Poland and Czechoslovakia, 
Czech, Czech, right, the Czech Republic is the least religious country in Europe. Mm -hmm. Poland is one of the more religious countries yeah. in Europe. So there are all these differences between countries, food and stuff like that. And that also is what makes it interesting to learn different languages. Spain has a different culture from mm -hmm. Poland, from Germany, from the, yeah. you know. So yeah, cultures can vary and that's part of the attraction of learning languages. Mm -hmm. If everybody had the same culture, the same language, the same food, the same songs, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be so interesting. Uh, do, you, do you think that it changes a person, the learner? Like, uh, for that matter, for example, uh, when I visit Spain, I and I start speaking Spanish and so on. I feel that my that I, I am getting more extrovert. Uh, I I'm, sometimes I approach people in the streets which I never do here yeah. because it's not, it's <laughs> yeah, not it's natural for my yeah. Polish uh, identity. Right. So sometimes I feel that every single language adds more identities and like I feel schizophrenic. You know, like I've got a couple of myself. Uh, do you think that it works yeah, this I, way? I, I absolutely agree with you. And what I liked in what you said was that it adds something. It doesn't replace. Mm -hmm. It doesn't replace. It adds a, a sort of a dimension, which actually influences you a bit, even in your Polish persona, mm -hmm. I yeah. found. Uh, because when we learn another language, we are imitating an aspect of the culture of that language. Mm -hmm. Because the language is part of the culture. And we have to try to imitate that language. So we are, in a way, imitating. There's no way. If I speak Japanese, okay, first of all, when I learn a, a language, so I want to be them. So I'm going to be imitating them. So I want to be like them. You have to have this desire to be part of that culture. So obviously, you are going to start imitating other aspects of their culture. And that does influence you even in your own culture. So we kind of expand a little mm -hmm. bit. We expand. We learn more. But it doesn't change fundamentally who we are. I don't think it changes. But it's mm -hmm. a little more superficially uh, mm -hmm. other things uh, that start happening. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's perfect. So, yeah, I like to talk to you too, for hours, but, but you've got things to do. Yep. Uh, so the last question, which is typical uh, to this show, uh, one thing or yeah. service that costs you only up to 100 bucks, but uh, it changed your life for the better. Something that was pretty valuable, although the price yeah. wasn't high. Okay, so I, I thought about that. Like, there are books that have influenced me. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Richard Dawkins' book on uh, evolution, you know, The Selfish Gene, mm -hmm. which explains the world in a way that I had no understanding of before. Uh, I've had people uh, tell me that uh, my videos and Link have changed their lives like uh, the number of people who say, thank you, you changed my life, mm -hmm. okay? But I think learning a language changes your life. So it doesn't matter where you spend that hundred dollars. Uh, but today, you don't have to go spend thousands of dollars. You don't have to mm -hmm. go attend a, a college or something. Yeah. There's so many ways you can subscribe to a podcast service or anything related to language. And if you, in addition to your hundred dollars, you also invest enthusiasm that can change your life. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, but in my own case, I mean, I've always been interested in languages. I can't think of a specific hundred dollars that mm -hmm. I spent anywhere, but there are books and I can't remember them all uh, that influenced me. Uh, but I would leave it that, um, yeah, learn a language. It'll change your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. So thanks a lot. And I've got a couple of gifts, gifts for you. Oh my goodness. Uh, one is in Polish. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Practice in Polish. One is in English. Okay. So if you've got some small members of, uh, of your family, then, uh, they can, they could read okay. it and learn how to save money. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Which is, I guess, a pretty important yep. skill uh, nowadays, uh, and not frequently promoted. Uh, and another thing. Okay. Expert. <laughs> now you're an expert. I, I hope that it will fit into your luggage. Okay, uh, definitely. <laughs> if uh, not, then we're gonna send it. Well, I'm not uh, sure what I'm an expert in. <laughs> uh, well, you only speak 20 languages. It's pretty. Okay, but I will find a place. It's a normal thing to do. Put yeah, this like on my <laughs> Very good. I Thank wish you a great stay here in Poland. Thank you. And thanks a lot uh, in the name of all our viewers who are interested in languages and especially in the name of those who weren't interested in languages, but right now they feel it. They feel this urge that I guess we have in our hearts that we just have to do it. It's great. We should 
all do it. I, I, I thank you, and I appreciate you know meeting a kindred spirit, somebody who's <laughs> out there not only motivated to learn languages himself, but also motivating other people to do so. <laughs> Great, I well, really enjoyed I, it. As I've said to you before the interview, uh, I, I told you uh, that uh, I've read your book 15 years ago. Yeah, uh -huh. so so I'm following you oh. you for years. Thank uh, you. So, thank you. <laughs> so okay. I guess a lot of our viewers. Yeah, will I will look it. forward to doing this book. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks a lot. Okay. Have a great stay. Thank uh, you. A wam wszystkim życzymy udanej podróży przez świat języków. Wszystkiego dobrego. Cześć.